Good morning and assalamu alaikum everybody. Um, I am Dr. Asif al Masok, currently working in uh, Badem General Hospital as a Registrar of Surgery. Um, today we are here to discuss uh, mostly about uh, the road to MRCS and FRCS. Now, uh, from this very morning, I have been getting a lot of um, mails, a lot of questions uh, from many of you guys. And uh, from the questions, I could understand that at this point, I think you guys know more about MRCS FRCS than myself. Uh, the rules and regulations of MRCS and FRCS are changing each and every day. Every few years, they are changing. So I am very sure that you are very... Uh, equipped with all the necessary information at this present moment. Um, okay, uh, at first, uh, let me just uh, give you a brief introduction about myself, uh, about what I have done, uh, about my academic career at, uh, mostly. Um, I, have, uh, I, my, I have studied in, uh, my school is uh, Scholastica, uh, and after that at 2000, I have uh, finished my O levels um, in 2000, uh, 2001, I think. 2001, I have finished my O levels. And then my college is Maple Leaf International. And 2003, I have finished uh, my A levels. And on 2004, I have started my medical, uh, med medical uh, studies in Sarsolimullah Medical College. After that, in 2009, uh, I finished my first. Uh, uh, my last prof, the final prof, then one year of uh, internship. So uh, now comes the most interesting part for you guys, the training, what I have done in my training and how I have got these degrees. Um, during uh, my, I started in 2011, uh, my training in Sarsolimula Medical College in the Department of General Surgery. Uh, after uh, on the on July two thousand eleven, um, I have uh, passed my FCPS Part One, FCPS Part One, and then uh, on I think in April two thousand twelve, I have passed uh, my MRCS Part One. So after three years of training, I have finished my FCPS training in two thousand thirteen. Uh, and 2000 on the Jan, I think on April 2014, I have passed my MRCS part two. That is MRCS is finished. Uh, this was actually MRCS. Yeah, I think 2014, right. On 2015, uh, on 2015 January, I gave, gave my FCPS uh, final part for the first time. Uh, unfortunately, I could not pass the first time. Uh, and July 2015, I gave the FCP a second time. Fortunately, I passed that time. Uh, after passing that, then I was uh, trying to go to England uh, for training or for FRCS. Um, but <clears throat> at this moment, I was thinking more about uh, the FRCS training would be very similar to MRC, I mean FCPS. So why go for again another five or six years of training, which I have just done? I mean, I am a fellow in my own country. I will not be very comfortable going to another country and uh, other people teaching me. I think I, I have done, um, I, I probably would know more about many of the surgeries than uh, those guys over there. And I'm telling you the, um, the, the training that we do in the government setting, I think if you are sincere, uh, you can learn a lot, at least about surgeries. Um, so I... Uh, uh, I talked to a few of the guys over there if I were in, in, in England uh, that what is the way to, to get the FSCS degree if there is any, uh, because I have already done all those things. So they called me and uh, they told me that you can give the uh, FSCS without training if you have the, if you can show them that you are qualified enough um, to get the FSCS, deg FSCS degree. So I checked out with the Joint Surgical College Fellowship Examination website, uh, which uh, let, uh, let me see if I can show you guys. Okay. This is the website. If you, I, 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 can you see? I hopefully you can see. This is the Joint Surgical College Fellowship Examination website. And here we, we have the, all the procedures uh, about how to give the FSS examination if you are an international surgeon. Not that's not working in uh, 
England at this at that present moment. So I gave the FSS exam through this website. And you can all go and check out what the what are the uh, necessary uh, documents that you need from this website. Uh, excuse me. Oh, okay. So uh, after that, I uh, sat for this exam. I think in uh, 2016 July for the FRCS Part One. Again, I failed in that Part One. Uh, uh, I said, and then they gave it for the second time. I think in the January 2018, I passed the Part One 2018. Uh, again, I sat for the Part Two in uh, somewhat sometime in 2018. I again failed in the par uh, Part Two. Oh, ultimately, I got my FRCS and the second time. In 2018 uh, July, I think 2018 July, yeah. And uh, on the exam in 2018 July, I got my FSCS degree, finally. Okay, now um, many of you guys. Uh, so that's uh, sort of my uh, degrees. Now I have. Uh, now if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask the questions. You can uh, enter the chat box or wherever you have any questions. You can ask me these questions. Uh, now, uh, from today morning, I have I have prepared sort of a, a lecture for you guys. Uh, but as I have already told you, I have seen that uh, probably you guys know a lot about all these things. So, but anyway, I will just talking short about the MRCS exam and everything. Now, uh, hopefully you can see, uh, this is the uh, MRCS, uh, the, uh, the, the syllabus, it's in the online. So I think uh, everybody should ha have this. There is a lot of information over here. What are the sections about uh, background and what are the different modules? You all know about the 10 modules, you get this thing. Uh, most importantly, if you look at this, um, if you can see, if you cannot see, if you're having any trouble, please uh, tell me. Another problem, the Archer, these are the books that you need. As you can see, most of the books we have been studying ourselves, the Grand's Anatomy, the Last Anatomy, and uh, Bailey and Love, and all those books. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. The syllabus is over here. So check out the syllabus. Before you start, you check out the syllabus. It's very, very important that you know, have a good knowledge about the syllabus then there are some there are some books for anatomy these are the books you want but the most important book as i'm sure you all of you know that i think the past test the essential revision notes i think all of you should have this book this is very very important to pass mrcs um, now i personally i am not a person who would go through many books i think it's important that you have one or two books uh, you go through that, make sure you know all about those books, and then maybe a few more books if you if there's somebody suggests some special uh, chapters from other books. But I think uh, for MRCS, uh, the essential revision notes are, I think it's go, it's a good book, and I think it's, I mean, everything is over here. I don't think anything else is necessary. Uh, now we all know that after January 2017, in our in when we were giving the exam, then the, the format has changed a bit. After January 2017, previously when we were giving the exams, it was a two hours exam each paper and uh, 135 and 135 questions each. Uh, now you have a five hours exam. Now you have a five hours exam with uh, I think 500 questions. Uh, uh, no, I think it's, uh, sorry, 300 questions, 300 questions. So but that's uh, the number of questions have increased, but the good thing is the amount of time per question has also increased. I mean, uh, I, I remember when I first, when I gave the exam, I, I thought that the time is so little. I mean, the, the questions are not that difficult. If you see, if you, if you, if any of you have given the part A exam, I mean, the questions that I did not think they're extremely difficult but the problem is you didn't have enough time to read the whole question and give the answer. So I had to rush. I mean, uh, last 20 or 30 questions, I had to really rush without reading all the questions. So I think the time, as the time has increased now, I think it's a, very, it's a big advantage for everybody. Uh, I think it would be a good thing for everybody. Okay. So about the modules, you know everything. So uh, basically, um, 
you all know about those things. I don't want to give you all this uh, advice that you know, start early, go hard. Uh, I will tell you about my own story, what I did uh, when I was giving the exam. Um, I'm sure most of you are also doing the same thing, that I was undergoing my training, as I have just told you. And uh, so, you know, that the training, you have to go there at least five days a week, plus two nights each week. Uh, to maybe one or two 24 hour duties. So after that, studying for a particular exam is not always easy. I know that. Uh, so I think if you want to go for MRCS, I think uh, three to four months of time, I think if you are very uh, disciplined and very regular person, then I think three to four months time, I think is good, which was in my case, three to four months, which I used. Um, so I think for part one or part A, but the first part, I think uh, three to four months of study is uh, is good. I think that would be enough for you. Um, read the particular books. I think that you can get all the books in New Market and uh, Aji Supermarket. You can get the books. Get all. I think you can get all the books. I think it's a good idea. Then from that, you can read. Um, one particular thing that I would suggest that solve the questions. Solve the questions and if you want, if uh, uh, don't study alone, that's another of my advice. Uh, have two to three persons in a group, not more than three. I think three persons is good enough. Um, if you are a, uh, if you, I think uh, if you are, if you are a guy, if you are a male person, I think have three male guys. Uh, it's better to have uh, three male guys than another female person in your group because I think uh, males are easily distracted. So I think for your own concentration, if you are male, keep three males. If you are female, then it's okay. I think may, girls are always, they can keep their concentration in any situation. But uh, if you're a guy, I think it's a better if you concentrate, if you have, it's if it's an all guys uh, group, that would be better for you guys. Um, practice uh, timeline, I think as I've already discussed, uh, three months to four months, I think is good enough for you guys. Mm. For part one, I think, uh, but, but part A, I think it's, I don't think any more uh, advice is necessary. This is good enough for you guys. For part B, I think a little bit more time is necessary. But what is more important is if you are, and if you are, on, if you are going through the training, it's a very good time to give the part B because you can also uh, do the clinical examinations on your patients, which I did. Which, which really helped me. We, I was in, I was training in uh, Sarsoli Mulla Medical College and Dhaka Medical College uh, in Midford Hospital for um, two years and one year in Dhaka Medical College. So I think those trainings really helped me to pass my MRCS Part B examination. Um, so I think uh, training would be very helpful for you guys. Uh, Acha, there are some frequently asked questions. How much time should I spend daily and all those things? I think it's up to you. It's how much you can study, how much you can take in. It it depends on what you are doing because uh, some of you guys that I know that you guys are uh, giving other exams as well. So you have to concentrate on the other exams as well. So concentrate on those exams. Um, now, my thing is, uh, this is an introductory class. So I let's uh, do a little bit of... Uh, other things as well. I would like to tell you about uh, what you want to do. Uh, just one second, please. So, uh, number one, first and most important thing that I think I would like to tell everybody is uh, what, what you need to do. There should be, nowadays, many of my students, even postgraduate students, undergraduate students, definitely. We all say, when we ask, when somebody asks us a question uh, that, uh, what would you like to do? What is your plan? Now, most of us are saying, I don't know what I want to do. Even somebody who's training in surgery, I know somebody is saying uh, a few days back telling me, I don't know whether I want to go into surgery or not. I'm a little confused. So these are the things. So you have to be first and most important thing that I want to tell everybody is that you need to have a vision. That is the most important thing. Vision is most important. A planning is most important in your life because uh, 
I've just been discussing to our organizers a few months back that uh, that our life between the time of 25 to 35 is the golden period of our lives. This is the time which which we have to concentrate, which should be planned very carefully. Uh, it's it's after that it's really a static period and all goes downhill for everyone. So the most important thing is that you have to have a plan. Now the number one plan is whether you want to stay in Bangladesh or whether you want to go abroad. That is the number one thing that you have to decide on. Whether you want to stay in Bangladesh or you want to go outside. Now, if you want to go outside, then planning should be very early. One way to go over there is give you a pass your MBBS from Bangladesh, pass the MRCS, give the ILTS, get the GMC registration, and go abroad. Okay. Now, if you want to stay in Bangladesh, then your one and only aim should be passing the FCPS or MS or any equivalent exams. That is the, that should be your number one aim. This is the thing which we have to, most important for us, that we have to decide very first that whether we want to stay in Bangladesh or we want to go abroad. Now, if you want to go abroad and then you are studying for FCPS for three years, then uh, if you are lucky, then you pass the FCPS in one year, that is four years, and then you start for your FRCS which again goes for another six or seven years of training and everything. I mean, this is absolutely useless. It's a useless money, a waste of time, really. So the most important thing that you need to do is, if you want to go abroad, give the MRCS, give the ILTS, get the GMC registration, go abroad and train over there. Now, you may ask that, uh, that then why have you done so many degrees in yourself? Okay, that's a fair question. Now, Two things in life are very important. Number one is money. And number two is more, the most important is time. Now you have to, I'm sure you'll agree with me on these two things, that the money and time, these are the two most important things in your life. So the, the international examinations, the MRCS, the FRCS, whatever you are talking about, this takes a lot of time and this takes a lot of money as well. So it's very important that you plan. You plan. So my plan was, to group the FCPS, to FCPS because in the very beginning I have decided that I will be staying in Bangladesh because I, uh, I, I did plan. I was thinking in, in going abroad and all those things. You know that uh, plans don't always work out. So after after a while, I decided and I thought about it hard. That what should I do? Should I uh, stay in Bangladesh? Should I go abroad? So after. Uh, after some months of hard thinking, then I decided that I'll be staying in Bangladesh. So my aim at that time was to give the FCPS exam. Now, what I saw is that I have a lot of time. I have a lot of time after my uh, training periods and which I could utilize to get a degree because I'm not really wasting any time. Because for MRCPS, they don't ask for anything else can just give the, your certificates of the uh, two years of training and that's good enough. So I submitted those certificates and I was qualified for the MRCS exam. So I gave the MRCS exam because I was not wasting any time. So I gave the MRCS exam. And uh, number one, number two is it also gives you some uh, confidence really. If you give the FRC, FCPS exam, if you have another exam, it gives you some confidence. And also one good thing that happened uh, when I gave my MRCS exam is um, I was uh, very uh, proficient with my clinical examinations. So that was very helpful during my FCPS exam, which really helped me. So after I uh, passed my FCPS exam, uh, at that moment, I really didn't have, I, I was not interested in uh, FRCS exam. Now, let me tell you something about at this point. Uh, many of you would be probably thinking about getting many, many degrees in your life. Now, let me tell you something. Many degrees don't make a better surgeon. If you want to be a good surgeon, you'll have to be, you have to do things practically. The most important thing is that you have, uh, excuse me, I think somebody's calling. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, the most important thing is that uh, what you need to do as a surgeon is you have to increase your skills. Now, as you all know that no degree really deals with the skills of a surgeon, the hand skills that I'm talking about, the surgical skills. Most of the 
uh, degrees deals with your dec decision making abilities. That's how you make it, how you, how you decide whether I should go into surgery, whether what sort of surgery I should do. Uh, excuse me, I think it's not a Okay. A lot of questions are coming. I'm sorry, but a lot of questions. I don't know I'll be able to answer all the questions. Um, okay. Uh, somebody is asking me about the MRCS. We were supposed to give the MRCS exams, uh, both the MRCS part one and part two exams in Bang from Bangladesh, but uh, uh, some problem happened after some year because I gave them both the exams, part A and part B in Bangladesh. Um, uh, somebody asking me about a question about uh, how to give the MRCS. I think for the present moment, um, due to the Corona crisis, you have to check uh, check out with the check out with the with with the website and the MRCS uh, authorities that when the exams will be held. I don't know if it's safe or would they able to take the exam right now. So uh, you have to check it out with those guys. I am not the right person to talk about it. Um, okay. Yeah. Yes. A lot of guys are asking about the road to FRCS more. And I think people are more interested nowadays in FRCS than MRCS. Okay. Yes, I am talking about those things. What uh, I did. Uh, so I, um, after passing my FCPS, after I uh, finished my FCPS, I really was not thinking about going into uh, doing a FRCS or something like that. I was mostly interested. I talked with uh, many stars and uh, many of them gave me the advice that don't go for another degree, go for training, go for training. That, and I also thought that that's a fair uh, thing to say that because you, I have done, I know most about, about all the decision-making about the knowledge of surgical skills and uh, I've learned it from my uh, FCPS exam. I don't think any further degree uh, FRCS or MS is going to help me uh, to be better in that. So what I did, uh, so I, uh, my plan was to uh, do some training and I was doing some training as well. Now, even when I'm doing the training, let me tell you something about trainings. If you want, after passing your FCPS exam or after passing any postgraduate exam, um, don't go for a lengthy training like two years, three years of training. I don't think those are very helpful because what you need to do is you need to learn something and apply it practically. That is very important. You need to apply those things practically. And also if you stay outside the country for two, three or four years, then after coming back to the country, it's very quite difficult for you again uh, to readapt to the situation in the country. So what I used to do after passing my FCPS exam, I used to attend all the uh, different uh, uh, conferences. Uh, I don't know whether you know that I am mostly interested in colorectal surgery. So I was the member of American, so American Society of College and Rectal, Colon and Rectal Surgeons, European Society, then Asia, Asia Pacific Society. So I became the member of all these uh, uh, associations. Uh, I get the, their journals. I stay up to date. I get a lot of videos from them, video surgery, surgical videos. Um, I attend all their, con usually try to attend all their conferences. This year, I could not attend any of their conferences for obvious reasons, you know. So, and each and every conference is so helpful. You get the latest information and you get the information. And in Bangladesh, you can come back and you can help your patients with those new latest treatment, new informations. So that was very, very helpful for me. So I personally, it is my personal opinion that don't go for, after, if you have passed your postgraduate exam, go for short periods of training. I wouldn't say even go for six months of training. I would say go more one month to two months of training. You learn something, you attend a lot of conferences, you talk to, you stay in touch with the big bosses, the top surgeons in the world. I, they are extremely helpful, believe me or not. You just... You, you, they have so many emails, so many questions, and they always take time to answer your questions. If you have a problem with some patient, you all tell them, you send them some pictures, you say, I have this problem, and they are going to give you the best information that's possible. So that's the way to improve yourself. So I, that, that's what I was doing. Um, then uh, also at a certain point of time, um, somebody told me that, uh, and I was also feeling um, 
in when you go abroad, you talk to people. Most of the people don't know about your uh, about FCPS. You know about FCPS that uh, uh, what kind of degrees you had and what some of the people ask. Most of them don't ask, but some they ask. And I could understand that many of them don't know about FCPS. But this is a very good degree. I tell you, I I I, I am a, not because I'm a fellow. Uh, I think you guys will agree that uh, FCPS, I mean, the exams are quite good. I mean, they're very, uh, it's quite difficult to pass and the SARS really check you out that whether you are, you are capable enough to become a consultant or not. So FCPS exam is a very good exam. But unfortunately, it's, it, it, many of the people abroad, they don't know about FCPS. They know about MRCS, but they don't know about FCPS. So after a certain while, I felt that there is a necess necessity for a, for a foreign degree, I think. So I was checking out with other people, uh, FCP, FRC, to how to get the FRCS degree after my FCPS. Um, uh, but I never was interested in spending another six or seven years of my life just training. You know, in the training, what you do? Training, you listen to other guys, they tell you to hold a... Uh, retractor and here you hold it for five, three or four hours. And at the end of the day, you write the OT notes. That's what you do. Really, that's what you do in the training period mostly. And if you're lucky, sometimes you get to do some surgeries. So I was not interested in that. Um, I was not interested in that. So I talked to a lot of people that what I can do, because I have, uh, I believe that I know I have got the necessary credentials to give the exam. So they told me that then you'd, uh, I think you should give the, uh, FRCS exam to the uh, FRCS exam to the Joint uh, Surgical College Fellowship Examination System, where you can have the you can do the training abroad, and if you can show that if you're if you have enough training and if, uh, enough and experience, and if they agree, then you can give the exam. So that's what I did, and it's it, the, the exam is actually as the, just the same as FRCS exam with uh, slight minor uh, changes. For example, the FRCS um, uh, in England, if you give the FRCS exam, uh, you have to know about the English rules and regulations. And they ask you a few questions about the rules and regulations of the English uh, health system. And if you give the joints or international FRCS, they will not ask you those questions because you don't need to know those questions. And uh, there is also an academic part, which is academic means uh, the, uh, the dissertations. Mm, academic questions, uh, there is no academic questions in uh, the international FRCS, yes. but it is the same degree. You have the, you get the same recognition and everything you get in the website. There's everything is the same. So I thought this is the best thing. So I, so I, um, so I uh, opted to go for the examination. And after a few pass and failed, and I uh, passed in 2018, I passed. I finally passed the exam. Uh, a lot of questions are coming. Let me just check. Uh, Acha, right. Uh, somebody is asking as to how to give the FRCS exam from Bangladesh. Right. Uh, if you want to give the FRCS exam from Bangladesh, I, uh, I after I pa after passing the exam, I have talked to many of my friends and encouraged them. Now, a lot of my friends, at least uh, five or six of my friends, are giving the exams uh, from Bangladesh. Uh, the first part, that is the MCQ and SQ, uh, the MCQ part. That exam can be given from Bangladesh. I, you again have to check it with your website, the current system, what's going on over there because of the coronavirus situation. Uh, but I'm sure they are going to start it. They are, the, they are giving their, I think one or two batches have already given the exam from Bangladesh. So you can definitely give the MRCS exam. And uh, yes, another question, a lot of coming, uh, lots of lots of the guys are asking me, do I need to give the MRCS exam before giving the FRCS? You do not need the MRCS exam for your FRCS, giving the FRCS exam, but I think the MRCS degree will help you to get a, I mean, it will make the FRCS uh, study a lot easier because you know the basic things, which helped me a lot. But definitely, if you want to go directly into the FRCS exam, you can go give the exam directly. There is not, it's absolutely not necessary to give the MRCS exam. Uh, but if you ask me, I would say that I think it would be better if you go for, I mean, pass the MRCS and then go for the FRCS. Um, it all depends. Now, uh, remember, what I'm saying is that if you have passed the FCPS exam, then I think it's better to just go for the FRCS. If you have not passed the FCPS, then give the MRCS first, then go for the FRCS. 
because up, uh, if you give up uh, these exams before before the FRS, you, you know the FRS is an expensive exam, and you don't want to sit it for four, five, six times. I mean, it's going to spend a lot of money. So I think that it's very important to be prepared. And I think FCPS, what we learn in FCPS, I think that's going to help you. If you have no FCPS degree, I think MRCS would definitely going to help you for the FRCS. Now, how to give the FRCS exam? Um, MRCS, I think that most of you guys know about MRCS, but if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me those questions. Uh, just before I finish, um, uh, let me tell you one thing. <clears throat> um, if you are, uh, uh, it's uh, very important uh, if for passing the F FMRCS Part B um, that uh, you join a few of the you know, websites. I think the past test have websites, eMRCS has any website or e-examination. You all know about those websites. I think if you go through those websites, I think they are going to help you a lot because the the for Part B, the English people, they have a slight different way of uh, approaching the patient. Slightly different. It's not all that different, but slightly different uh, way of introduction. And they take a lot of time introducing, asking questions. Um, so uh, most of the us from the Bangladesh, what happens when we, when during the examination, when we, exam, when we uh, do the clinical examination in front of the examiner, we are very um, rigid. We don't talk to the patients. Huh? But uh, if you look at those websites, if you look at those videos, even in YouTube, there are a lot of, lot of videos. So look, look at those videos. Look at those videos, and I think they are going to help you a lot. So uh, do those things. For example, uh, in MRCS exam, I would say that uh, examination of a hernia. In Bangladesh, we do not usually wear the gloves. Uh, but, uh, but in MRCS exam, they would prefer that if you wear the gloves. I mean, they, if you don't wear the gloves, then I don't think that's a good, good impression by the examiner so i think it's a better idea if you wear a gloves so these are the small things that i think you can learn from those websites another problem that we i think bangla as we bangla as bangladeshis we face is the communication skills because not we are not used to communicating with the patient the way they uh, the british people prefer so it also takes a lot of preparation, a lot of practice. So I think it's a few videos from the website and from YouTube, I think those are going to really help you with, uh, with the uh, studies. Okay, uh, somebody is asking me about the training options now, uh, about MRCS, right. About MRCS, uh, if uh, there is, they do not really look for a great a lot of training but uh, i think uh, when you give it, when you are giving the part b exam before giving the part b exam they would expect you to have uh, two years of uh, training two years of before giving the part b exam two years of training they would expect from you so you can get the training certificates from your supervisor and just you can photocopy it and send it to them mm, i don't know what is the system right now but we used to do a uh, attestation or uh, Rotary at the station by Rotary Public, and then you can send it to the uh, to the um, to the authorities, and I think that would be helpful. But yeah, I think they need two years of training for MRCS. For FRCS, they would expect at least three at least three years of training. Even more is better for them, but they would at least need three years of training for FRCS. Um, okay, uh, so MRCS after MRCS, uh, uh, what to do about the FRCS degree? How to get the FRCS? Um, it is uh, procedure is very simple. Um, after finishing the MRCS, what you have to do is um, you have to uh, get three referees. That's three references from uh, three professors, uh, three professors. And uh, after that, um, when you get the three referees, three referees are uh, has to be one of them. At least one of them has to have an FRCS degree. One of them has to have an FRCS degree. Number one. Number two, one of them has to be your uh, current training supervisor or at least head of the department of your training program. And uh, number three is uh, any surgeon who can uh, who, who you were working with for last three years. These are the three um, uh, referees that you'd be necessary. Uh, one logbook, I think it's very simple. Just make out, uh, give them the, what are the operations that you have done recently. Uh, under supervision or you have done independently or as an observator observa uh, in, uh, or observation. So you can just send it to them. Um, that's it. And the training certificates that would be necessary. After you send them all these documents, they will uh, ask you a few questions after that. 
and if you if you can satisfy them with all those questions then uh, there you will be eligible i i don't think it's a difficult process a very simple process i, I there's no no difficulty in that so you can you guys can continue with that uh now now the many of uh, guy many of the guys are asking me that uh, which one is better about uh, going to the yeah many of the guys are many of you are asking that whether it's uh, good uh, to give the international frcs or uh, the frcs that you are um, uh, or the or the frcs frcs from the england i let me just show you this thing i'll just give you an example now you know, hopefully you can see everything uh now you, uh, if you can see the if you if you can if you cannot see please tell me if you can, if you can't see okay now hopefully you can see the screen now if you look at this uh you give the mrcs exam then there are fellowships now the fellowship you can give two ways the international specialty fellowship examination or international fellowship examination okay now i've given the international fellowship examination now the thing is that if you want to give the international intercollegiate fellowship examination now then there is a then what you have to do let me just show you this thing right let me just show you how you have to do it uh, this website actually this is the royal college of surgeons of england website i think this website has the best thing that there, there should best way best if you want to understand the english, english training process now the number thing is that um, after finishing your MRCS exam, uh, if you want to go for go to England and then you want to give the exam, so what you have to do now the thing is that you have finished your medical school for five or six years, then you have done at, uh, then you have done your internship for another one year, then you have done your internship for one one year and then you go to England. What they do in England, uh, they do a foundation training, which is actually equivalent to the, this is the foundation training for two years of foundation training. This is the uh, actually equivalent to the internship program that we are doing at this moment. Okay, after you finish your MRCS exam, then you give the MRCS exam, then you enter the core surgical training. Okay. Uh, you can start the core surgical training be before your MRCS. This is again two years, but you, you'll have to do this. You can do this core two years of core surgical training at the end of the two um, core surgical training. So they will expect that you give the MRCS exam. So at the here, as you can see, it is written over here at uh, core surgical training second year, you have to give the MRCS exam. Now, after you finish the MRCS exam, then you can enter the specialty training. Which, which which say, say the st the specialty training the core surgical training you can say the specialty training now look at this it is actually six years it requires six years of training so what we had so their training is sort of like six years plus two years of core training so that is actually eight years now, if you have the mrcs then you can enter the specialty training of six years and at the end of the six years then you have to give the FRCS exam either through the Joint Surgical Committee or through the Joint College of Fellowship Examination. These are the things. And then you can do, and um, after you do that, then you can, you can either attain the CCT or Certificate of Completion of Training or CESR. These are the two degrees. I, I know there's a lot of difficulty, so I, I'm not going to describe everything. You just go to this website. Please go to this website and uh, have a look at this. This is a Royal Surgical College website. So just go to this website and you all these things are written over there in greater details. Their system is quite difficult, quite uh, difficult to understand. So I think that it's better for you guys to go into the website, check it out. Now the mic thing, what I want to say here, all the reason that I'm t telling you all these things is because now, if you want all, if you have passed your FCPS exam, that means you have passed for example, in my uh, MBBS, I finished my internship in uh, 2010. In 2015, I passed my F uh, FCPS. So that is five years. I took five years to pass my uh, fellowship exam. Now, if you add after that, if you want to do the, uh, if you want to go to England and do the do the whole process again and do the FRCS exam, get the FRCS degree. That means you'll take another six to eight years to get the FRCS degree, as I've just showed you. 
six to eight years of eight years of training. So that means to get the FRCS degree, you need uh, in form in my case it would take around five thirteen years. So if I do the FRCS degree right now, so I would not be getting it. I will be probably be getting the degree in uh, I think uh, two thousand twenty three. Probably if I pass in one go, then 2023, I would probably going to get the degree. Now, on the other hand, if you go to the other channel, that is Joint Chow College of Surgical Fellowship, and uh, which gives the international degree, which is an equivalent degree in every way, you do that and you can get it. And I have, the, I have got my FSCS degree in 2018. That is three years after passing my FCPS degree. Now, Michael, now I know that many of you will be asking that you know, now what now what you'd want to do now if you want to go to abroad, you can always go abroad and uh, now you have to you don't go for the CCT you go for the CESR. Now you go for the CESR you can also check it out in the website. Uh, let me see if I have it. I think I have everything over here. Let me just show you. Here, if you look at it, I hopefully you can see the system. Now, this is the CCT program. The CCT program is you have completed a GMC approved training program. If you have completed a GMC approved pro clinical pro tra training program, then, then that means how long you're going to take. Uh, two years of foundation training, two years of crown training, that is four years. Then six years of specialist training, that is 10 years. And then how long, whatever time you need to pass. So that at least 10 years you need to get your CCT. And then after that, you have to uh, sit for the, uh, then you can uh, specialist, there you can be the specialist registrar for the becoming the consultant. On the other hand, if you have the foreign degree and the FRCS, then you don't have, that is, the, you don't complete a GMC approved training program. You have to go, go to the CESR. CESR means Certificate of Eligibility for Specialist Registration. This is the pathway that you have to take. You can go to the website and you can check this all out. So you don't have to, um, think about it. The, the website, everything is given. I think that this system is much better because if you want to save time, because you don't want to save, I mean, spend, you don't want to spend 13 or 14 years of your life just getting two degrees if you have the FCPS. But if you don't have the FCPS, then I would suggest then you go abroad. That was what I have told you previously. Then you go abroad and finish your FRCS degree. That's not a problem. But if you have the FCPS degree, then I would highly recommend that you go for the international FRCS, which is an equivalent degree in everywhere. And you, the pathways are all the same. Everything is same, but you get the degree much faster. And what is more, the great thing about the FRCS degree is once you go abroad, once you talk to a lot of people, for example, you go to India. Now in India, you, you will see that a lot of the big doctors, they have the FRCS. Now, if you have an FRCS, if you talk to those guys of the, over there having the FRCS, you'll see that their reaction to you a lot different. They appreciate you more. They give you, they talk to you with a lot of importance. They even ask you when you have passed your efforts. Yes, I have passed in it. I mean, they feel like as if you are at par with those guys. So, and they know their qualifications. So that's the thing. If you have an international degree, that is way, that is the way it's going to help you. But I always, always remember that I always suggest that if you want to stay in Bangladesh, always go for the FCPS or MS or an equivalent degree. There's no question about that. When you have that degree, then you get a, a get another degree, another foreign, again another degree. And if you want to get another degree after FCPS, I would suggest go for a foreign degree. Don't go for FCPS general surgery and then MS general surgery. I mean, there's really no point to do that. And you're getting the same degree. It's like um, it's like after passing the HSC exam, you're getting another HSC examination. If you're giving another HSC exam, you're getting another certificate. Nobody's doing that, right? Nobody's even doing HSC and then O levels again. So, because they are the same thing. So, don't go for the same thing. If you want to go for another degree, get one degree from Bangladesh, one degree from abroad. I mean, that, that I think would complete everything. That is my suggestion. Of course, I mean, every person has got different suggestions, different ways of thinking. I don't have, I respect all of your thinking. If you think that, no, I want to get five degrees, I don't have any problem with that. It's not a problem for me. But what I am saying is that if you want to say, if you want optimum use of your money and optimum use of your time, I would suggest that this is the thing you want, you guys want to do.
this is uh this is my suggestions definitely uh okay uh there are a lot of questions let me have a look can i ask one question hello can hello 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 can you hear me yes please oh i have two questions uh, thanks for your class actually i observed that uh, few few question that means uh, the efforts says about the international efforts says you explain that uh, difference between international efforts and uh, efforts done in the uk right right which uh, i have already discussed um, same equivalent yes they are number one they are the equivalent examinations they are equivalent um, in every way uh, but if you want to go through the um, firstly let me just uh, explain the what are the minute difference between the two examinations uh, the international efforts yes uh, in the international efforts yes as because you are not a doctor in uk so there will not be any questions re regarding related to the uk law rules and regulations because you will not you probably will not be working over there so they will not ask you any questions regarding i'm sure you when you are studying the mrcs you'll see there's a lot of questions regarding the uk rules and regulations and what you are going to do in this situation and that situation these questions will not be there number one and number two the academic part uh, there is another uh, five or six questions that comes from the academic section the academic sections meaning the dissertation or any publications that you have done or you are doing uh, as because you are not working over there so they will not ask about any publication which uh, in bangladesh in fcps which you do is the effort, the dissertation that you do that is the thing that you don't have to do because uh, there is no point i mean you cannot pass the dissertation over to england and then get them checked because of the ethical issues and everything but in every other way the two exams are the there is the part 1 there is a part the part a there is two parts same number of questions and the format and everything is the same except those two parts the academic part and the questions about rules and regulations in uk and uh, another difference is when you are going to if you are after passing the international efforts yes if you want to go abroad uh, go to um, england to work then to the enter the specialist registry you have to go to the cesr pathway which i have just showed you you have to go to the cesr pathway not the cct pathway because cct pathway represents those who has worked in uh, under the gmc so as you have not worked under the gmc you will go to the ce uh, uh, sr pathway uh, which this all everything is in the website you can just have a look into the website and you will get all the necessary information for application for a direct efforts is international efforts is uh, which paper needed to submit the royal college of physicians and surgeons acha uh, for efforts is examination uh, international efforts is you have to go to the website and everything is written over there you know uh, just go to the joint surgical college fellowship examination website uh, joint surgical college fellowship uh, excuse me hello hello sir ha ami ekhon ekta ekta meeting e achi apni eshe ta adha ghonta pore kotha boli thik ache adha ghonta pore okay okay uh i uh, let me if you want uh, just give me a moment i'll show you the website it's over here so uh, just excuse me um yeah uh can you see yeah yes this is the website joint surgical college fellowship examination and uh, you can look over here um they, they have written everything all the information that you need what is the syllabus everything is actually the same the syllabus and everything is the same um the it, it it's written over here every questions all the questions you have what is the syllabus what is the rules and regulations where the exams going to be held what are the minimum minimum qualifications that you would be necessary what it be necessary for you to sit for this exam everything is needed over here so go to this website 
everybody who's in, who is interested in this join surgical colleges fellowship examination website this is the website for you guys i highly recommend that you give if you want to if you after passing the fcps if you want to go the fsrs don't go through the gmc system because that would be extremely lengthy and you'll take round about 10 you almost i think 8 to 10 years to ultimately get your fsrs degree i uh, probably something like that but if you go through this for example i got the fsrs degree in uh, four years i think after passing my fcps so i think that this is uh, this is because it in an every way it is the same you get the same certificate you get the same recognition that's the thing so you do if you want to even you want to go to abroad with this you have to you can go through this but if you don't have the fcps then i would suggest that you go abroad and get through the training and then go the fsrs if it is your intention to work um internationally then i think then the other way is the good way because you will be staying over there so um go through their system it would be better for you but if your plan is after passing the fcps you want to stay in bangladesh also get an international degree this is definitely the choice for you if you guys have any further questions definitely you can ask me i can i don't think after going through the have... d I have one question. I am going to tell you that our students are senior. I am just going to tell you that our students are passing the prelims. They are applying for the FSC to join the college. So they have to apply for the FSC to join the college. So they have to apply for the FSC to join the college. So they have to apply for the FSC to join the college. So they have to apply for the FSC to join the college. So they have to apply for the FSC to join the college. So they have to apply for the FSC to join the college. So they have to apply for the FSC to join the college. So they have to प्रोसिजियर right. They have asked me a lot of questions, and I, uh, all of them actually got to uh, were successful in giving the examinations. I think most likely they have, uh, they have, there is some problem with the procedure they have been following. Probably in the correct format was not followed. I think uh, if you follow the correct format, there should not be any problem because all these guys who are now sitting for the exams, they have followed the examination guidelines, and all all of them are giving the exams. Uh, I think that if you are having any problem, the the helpline is very very helpful they have a contact address there is a the contact address you contact with those guys i mean they are very, here if you see the contact yeah the if you, yeah. you can contact with these guys they are very very helpful i mean almost within an hour or two hours they give you the answer so you contact with those guys you ask them what the problem was and you can correct it i am sure if you have fcps there should be no problem in giving the frcs i mean you can directly sit for the exam there's i can guarantee you 100% because everybody is sitting like that. i have done it my friends my colleagues they are all sitting with the same procedure and they have been always successful in giving the exams uh, thank you uh, another question <clears throat> after passing if mrcs but b Uh, yeah. the, they need to go uh, UK and job and go through the GMC procedure, but it, it, is it is uh, easier than PLAB uh, or MRCS or PLAB easier to get a job and complete the surgical training in UK? Okay, MRCS or PLAB. I I would suggest that if you have finished your MBBS degree, I think it is better you go for MRCS. because if you give the mrcs with the mrcs you get a certificate i mean plav is not a certificate you, you cannot use the certificate for very long and i mean it's a, it has got a expiry date with it as well i think you give the mrcs exam you get a certificate that stays with you for the rest of your life with that you go for the ilts which is not a very difficult exam you sit for the ilts exam maybe you take one or two two exams to get the 7.5 average score and it, you get the gmc registration i think that would be very easy but certainly plab is also i think if you have no training if you're training if you have no training or if you are sitting for the exam earlier i think plab is big plab is also a good idea it is individualized really i mean it's uh, 
for me i think I, uh, for me it was always going for the mrcs was the best idea but uh, there are a lot of other guys who are very junior i mean maybe in the third year fourth year now they are going for the exam i think for those guys it's better to go for the plab actually plab jeta seta to gp gp practice kintu mrcs jeta seta to amra actually surgery te jara jabe tader jonno right 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 surgery te jokhon jabe ami bangladesh e jodi view ne dekhi je ami कतटुकुदेश सुपरभिशन so it's very very competitive and they will definitely want someone uh, from their own country i think so there would be you from us for us it would be a disadvantage if you go over there definitely i mean you would be the second option if there is a english guy who is applying and who has the same qualification as you i am sure that they will they are going to select the english guy first rather than you or me so that would be a problem but even in that case Uh, what you have to do is you have to have connections with a lot of people i mean connections always help you know what you know what to do is you need to talk to the consultants your favorite consultants two or three consultants that you are coming from bangladesh you want to work with you okay so that this guy knows you so whenever you have the mrcs and you ask for the, if you want to work over there after getting the gnc registration they have a soft spot and they can select you so communication is also very important you have to communicate with their consultants i mean i know it's very difficult but again you have to go over there that's why what what i do is i go into a lot of conferences and then i talk to a lot of these big bosses so that they know me so that next time if i have any uh, favor to ask if i ask them say sir i want to work with you guys for 7 days or 5 days uh, or one month and they say that they if they know me then they say that okay you can come and work for me so sir mane परिचित जरा Definitely, there are a lot of Bangladeshi uh, consultants over there. Uh, you can definitely they would you would be their first choice. I'm sure they you would be their first choice. Up there, you can talk to those guys, those sirs, those consultants. Jara Okhane Katsko and I have seen many of them doing very well, very well, and they are getting top positions over there. So uh, if you go over there, talk to those uh, them. I think that would be very very helpful. In fact, some of the sirs also come to Bangladesh. you see a lot of sars lot of consultants from england come to bangladesh and attend a lot of conferences it is very important that you attend those conferences and you talk to the sars and get to know them make sure get their emails keep in contact with them and then when you need them then you ask for a favor that means uh, the consultant ta jodi amake favor korte chay tader she ability ache je amake favor korte parbe definitely because it actually the consultant decides who is going to train with them fine thank you and another question eta jodi amra erkom hoy je dhoren je ekjon mrcs poriksha part b debe to dawar age hoyto ba ektu observership kore ashlo je tar ekta experience holo e ei ei observership er je certificate ta eta jokhon she mrcs part b pass kore chakrir jonno apply korbe tokhon ki tar jonno kono rokom ota kintu observership mane not the gnc registration i think तो जो 
and one person comes with an MRCS plus an observership, certainly the guy or the girl with the observership will get preference. But ultimately, we show it to each and every quality check. This is, these are actually so competitive. Je, ukhane ki ultimately, each and everything they look for. Je, mm. What are the qualifications they have? Now, two persons having the same qualifications, two persons are having same MRCS. The person with the MRCS plus observership will definitely get the job. Uh, actually, Amadara Hutte Junior Telemera, MRCS part B, Porikadice, Amita del Keshadan to Shadishan del Testa Kurija, part B, Daragi, the Akmash observership, Kurisha Hatara with thinking, but Ukanta de attitude to the Bangladesh take to different. It a decashlo, Tahle, it a Jesuita part B, Pashko to help put Satana in two chatter. Hello. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any more questions, I can ask. I think our time is up for today. Uh, certainly, we are going to uh, meet in the future. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, uh, for coming and uh, taking your time on this beautiful Friday morning, not going outside and listening to my boring lecture. Thank you so much. Um, I'm sure we are going to meet in the future. If you guys have any questions, uh, you can ask me. You can have my emails or anything. I'm always there to help you guys in any way possible. I have my students. I, I'm... I have got this. Uh, I mean, whatever questions you're gonna have, my stu students are always asking me this and that questions. So you guys can also always come over here. You can go, uh, ask me all these questions. How to um, help? Uh, I have got some a lot of resources. I can help you with you with those things. So there's no problem. Please feel free to ask any questions or any help you want. You need. Uh, thank you very much and uh, assalamu alaikum. Before finishing, I have one question. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, actually, from the comment box, uh, anyone comment that uh, maybe uh, he completed FCPS uh, uh, or MS in branch. Branch that means not in general surgery. Then he, uh, he wanted to uh, do FRCS in same branch, like orthopedics, like colorectal. Uh, have any option this? That colorectal MS, uh, so colorectal in, in FRCS. I, as far as I know, colorectal, I mean, I wanted to do an FRCS in colorectal surgery, but that's not, uh, that uh, I think colorectal FRCS is not there. Uh, you, uh, All a general surgery, right? Right. In general surgery, that's right. You have to do it uh, in general surgery. Yes. Uh -huh. Somebody asked me about uh, if you, uh, okay. Okay, um, I think you're right. I'm the organizer of uh, it, uh, We are over. There are a lot of questions, a lot of questions. Uh, we will definitely go through the lot of questions. Keep the questions coming. Uh, you can call, contact me uh, in my, uh, I, I think I have to open, a, what is that thing? The Facebook uh, live or something like that to help you guys. Don't worry, we will come to this um, uh, platform again, Road to MRCS and FRCS. We will discuss further. Uh, today, unfortunately, we are out of time. A lot of questions are there. We will definitely answer all the questions. We would definitely like to help you guys. Thank you so much and assalamu alaikum.